If you're an average computer user, odds are excellent you're using one of these to cool your CPU. On today's Fast As Possible, we're going to tell you all you need to know about the basic aftermarket CPU cooling options that are available to you. Now to be clear, if you're not overclocking, that is turning up the speed of your CPU, the stock cooler is very functional. It's inexpensive, in fact it comes free with most CPUs. It's easy to install, it's relatively quiet as long as again you're not trying to do anything crazy with it, and it'll fit in pretty much any case and will not interfere with other components on the motherboard such as high profile memory sticks that stick up high like this. The problem with stock coolers is the performance isn't very good. Look at the size of this. An aftermarket air cooler can have way more surface area and use much larger fans than a stock cooler. It's also inherently very reliable because there's almost nothing to fail on it. It's great for overclocking and in terms of quiet operation, being able to use large, highly optimized, high performance fans such as this one or even taking all the fans off it and just using the case fans to passively draw air through a large heatsink like this can make your system not only look great, but be incredibly silent. Now the disadvantages of large aftermarket air cooling heatsinks can be mostly compatibility. I can fit it on this way, but I'm only going to be able to put a fan in the middle because my high performance, high profile memory gets in the way on this side and my MOSFET gets in the way on this side. Also, if I oriented it this way and I had seven PCI slots and my top slot was for my graphics card, I wouldn't be able to install that graphics card. And you can clearly see it's not going to fit on this way at all. If you buy a small, you know, non-cooling optimized case, you can even run into issues where the heatsink is so high profile off the motherboard that you can no longer close your case side panel. You do have to do some planning and put some thought into it when you're using aftermarket air. These pre-filled liquid cooling units can offer some advantages versus other solutions. They're very low profile on the CPU socket. Usually the pump and the cooler are mounted on the CPU with tons of room around it for high profile memory or MOSFET heat sinks or anything else you'd want, while the bulk of the cooling is actually done away from the CPU socket using a large radiator. You get that performance that comes with having options available that even use dual 120 millimeter or dual 140 millimeter fans and you get great looks. The only disadvantage for stuff like liquid coolers is it does add a second point of failure to your system. So if either the pump or the fan fails on your liquid cooler, then your CPU won't be very cool and your system will probably automatically shut down. And they can be a touch difficult to install. So while they come in a variety of configurations, thick radiators, thin radiators, 120 mil, 140 mil, single radiator, dual radiator, ugh, you're gonna have to plan for it. If you don't have a large gaming oriented chassis, there's a chance that a liquid cooler like this won't even fit in your system. Thanks for watching this episode of Fast as Possible on TechWiki. As always, don't forget to subscribe to TechWiki. Don't forget to like the video, it helps us a lot. And share the video with anyone who you think might benefit from the information. If you have a suggestion for a Fast as Possible episode, click the link in the video description and leave that suggestion for us. We'll have a look and there's a very good chance we will produce a Fast as Possible just for you.